In this video, we will be looking at a three-dimensional cellular automaton script, and we're going to implement a kind of a layer-based strategy to uh, create generative models using simple binary rules. And um, uh, for this exercise, uh, I'm going to basically show you first what we'll be achieving at the end of the um, video. And then I'll be writing this code from scratch so that you can also follow uh, the instructions and uh, learn some of the three-dimensional approaches for modeling and processing. Um, so this is our simulation screen. I'm also using a plugin called PZCam. I'll show you where you're going to install it. And um, basically, when I run the script using the algorithmic principles, you can see certain growth patterns. I'm going to reset this one so that you can see another variation as well. So the variations are um, they can be generated uh, really quickly and you can also control some of the parameters for this uh, type of simulation as well. So we'll be looking at uh, an exercise like this. So I'm going to close uh, this window and uh, start a new script so that we can actually start it from scratch. I'm going to hide this menu as well. And the first thing I want to do is uh, actually import PZCam. So import uh, PZ dot star is the keyword to import the all the elements of the PZCam library. If you haven't installed this plugin, you can simply go to Tools, Add Tool, and under Libraries, if you type in PZ. Um, there's a PZ cam option here. Uh, mine is installed, it's just waiting for an update, but you will see a way of installing this uh, to your computer as well so that you can use it for all the sketches you want to um, you want to do three-dimensional modeling because this gives you kind of the camera options. Um, that becomes really handy when you want to navigate around uh, three-dimensional geometry. So I'm going to create a PZ cam camera, PZ cam cam. And uh, let's initialize our uh, program first. So I'm going to type in void setup. And this time we'll be working in 3D. So my size is going to be 600 by 600 pixels. You can increase this resolution as you like. Uh, and we'll be passing in um, processing 3D so that processing knows it's a three dimensional library. Then I'm going to initialize my camera. So cam equals pz new pz cam and we have to pass in this program as this and i'm going to set up a parameter for the camera and there are certain um, parameters you can define for the uh, for the camera perspective settings so the first one being set minimum distance and the second one being set maximum distance so uh, these basically define uh, kind of the clipping planes for the camera view and we want to um, basically show where you want to clip, clip the model. Then I can also uh, type in cam suppress roll rotation mode. You can also find these on the PZ cam website. So these are some of the options to control our camera. Basically I want to control its clipping plane, its perspective and I want to control how we want to rotate the camera. Uh, then I'm going to switch to void draw and under draw, uh, the first thing I want to do is actually define the background. Background is 255. And I want to enable lights. We're going to get to lights later. And I want to show a simulation box so that we can look at the confines of our program and for at this phase this will be actually it and before I run this of course we need to do something with um, this error here because we don't have a function that is defined as show simulation box at the moment and I have to start defining uh, the simulation box. So I'm going to be using a method for um, drawing three-dimensional geometry using uh, translate and scale. So we, we're going to first use push matrix. Then I'm going to do translate. 
and I'm going to define a value here for the simulation. So we can do it um, kind of S size for the simulation size. And let's define it on top actually. So let's go all the way to the top. And I'm going to define it an int variable here and call it S size equals uh, 80. Let's say we have 80 by 80 uh, cube. And after that is defined, let's go back to uh, sim, sim, uh, simulation box. And here I want to uh, translate to the center of it. So that's why I'm going to divide it by half for X, Y, and Z. And then I want to scale it to the um, sim size in X, Y, Z. So what this is going to do is first, um, translate the location of the matrix to the origin of the box, then we're going to scale it up to 80 by 80. And then we're going to simply draw a box there so that uh, that will be how we represent our three dimensional geometry. So I don't want, um, we want to have stroke, we don't want any fill and we want the stroke weight to be um, kind of a, in a proportion relationship with the sim size so that we can, if, if we want a larger box, the stroke weight will be increased. I don't want any fill, so no fill. And I can simply do box one, one, one as parameters. So X, Y, Z dimensions will be one, but because we are scaling it up with 80, we're going to have a uh, box that is 80 in X, Y, Z. So I'm going to do pop matrix. Um, let's see if um, this would run. So when I run it, our sketch, now you can see that I have a cube in my window. So um, basically the, the simulation we are going to do inside of this. Um, <coughs> so uh, let's keep going with the, um, <coughs> So the second step will be about um, keeping a data set that will discretize the space in uh, a three-dimensional array. And uh, it's going to keep track of our uh, boxes. So we're going to have initial boxes on the, on the ground, let's say at the bottom of the cube. And then we want to accumulate boxes using some algorithmic rules of adjacency. And we want to accumulate it la layer by layer. So uh, I basically need uh, a data structure to um, to keep track of the boxes that I have in the sketch. So I'm going to first save my uh, sketch and the desktop. So let's call it CA3D final. And I'm going to come down here. And on top, let's define our, um, our array first. So I need a dimension for my box sizes. So I'm going to type in int dimension equals, let's give it a dimension of five. And I want to define an array size, so you can call it AS equals uh, sim size, simulation box size, divided by dim, All right? So if we have 80 by 80 box, and if I divide it by five, we're going to have um, an array size of 16 in each direction. And then I'm going to define a three-dimensional array using three brackets and call it CA. So this will be where we keep our uh, cellular automaton. And uh, that's basically it. Here in the setup, I can simply define a reset function so that we can initialize uh, the cellular automaton grid. And we can also define some sort of an input as well. So I'm going to write it here. So void reset. And inside of reset, what I want to do is initialize the array. So we want to have a new Boolean grid. And I want to simply pass in the array size three times so that we create uh, a three dimensional grid containing the number of boxes that we need. 
Um, so what I want to do is um, initialize this list with some sort of an input so that we can see how it's going to be visualized. Uh, but for now, we can um, simply leave it uh, like this, or we can also write a double for loop here. So we can say for int i or x equals zero to i smaller than as and i plus plus. And then within this, we can also write another for loop and call it in j this time and j plus plus and don't forget to close it as well and inside of here I can simply say if random smaller than 0 0.5 so there's a 50% chance of that cell being uh, true or false I can say ca i j and we want the uh, zero index for z to be true or this could be um, false as well right so this could be false so that's pretty much it so this would reset um, our server automata uh, on the on the first layer and we also want to um, show it somehow so we can simply go under the draw function since CA is defined as a global list. All I have to do is write another for loop here. So basically after showing the simulation box or before the simulation box, it doesn't matter. You can simply copy this double for loop and we want to add another for loop here because it's a three dimensional grid and I want to define a K parameter as well. And inside of this, uh, I want to check if the cell is active, right? So if CA, I, J, and K, that means if the cell is true at that um, three-dimensional matrix position, then I want to show a box there. So we can say I, J, K, and um, I can simply pass in a parameter, but it, it's not necessary. So this is this is basically it's show box IJK. So I want to show a box using those uh, indices. And let's look at how we show that box. So underneath uh, show simulation box, we could actually nest these two together, but I wanted to do them separate so that you can see two different ways of visualizing boxes. So I'm going to do show box int x int y int c. Uh, you can use different parameters here. So um, basically, these this is how I call that function, ij with ijk. But I can have my input names to be changed here to something else. So um, it actually um, doesn't matter. So inside of this, uh, we are going to do something similar to show simulation box. We could have actually done like passing a size parameter here as well, and get rid of this too if if we want to. Um, so we start with push matrix again and then this time I want to translate to a location that is respective to the indices right so I want to go to the X index but I want to multiply it with dimension because we are moving in three-dimensional space whereas these are simple integers in an array so uh, initially my box uh, size is 80, dimension is 5, so this grid is 16 by 16 by 16. And in order to find the right XYZ locations, I need to multiply um, these with the dimension value as well. So that's why I'm translating it in X, Y, and Z um, by multiplying it with dimension. And we also need to um, add another uh, parameter which is dimension divided by two so that we move to the center of each box right so I add these as well and then I can simply scale the box we're going to define as dimension and we want to fill these so I'm going to fill them with 100 and we want to stroke 100 and stroke weight Let's define it by 
uh, 1.0 over dimension and I want to place a box there and pop matrix so the difference actually there isn't much difference so uh, here this is we are just showing the simulation box without having any input so it automatically translates to the origin using the box size and then it scales it up using the size right so these are similar actually I can get rid of this one by inputting some sort of dimension parameter here but uh, I'm not going to do it for this exercise so you can you can see that this also um, uses the indices of each active cell and we are simply first moving to the center of each cell so uh, x times dimension plus dimension uh, over 2 is basically moving us to the uh, midpoint of that box and then we are scaling uh, first for dimension so that when we draw a box at 111 uh, we will get the right size in the right place so uh, let's look at how this will turn out so it's giving me um, an error here so it's saying void uh, because we didn't close this for loop here so let's close it up as well and I'm going to run this so you can see uh, our first uh, layer is being populated by boxes now right so using this uh, reset function uh, basically I went through the X and Y as a grid and um, through a random variable and if it was there was 50% chance each cell in the first layer was true or false so now we can use this as kind of a, a base to uh, do some generative applications so now we can visualize boxes in 3d and we also have a data set that discretizes the space so that we can keep track of um, how this is going to propagate. 